Amen. If you may be seated, you can be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I, I'm just so excited uh, for the word that uh, the Lord has for us today um, because uh, we are trying our best to operate in the wisdom of God. And uh, the name of the service is BKM Has Gone Fishing. <laughs> BKM Has Gone Fishing. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to be studying just a few uh, verses this morning. Uh, and God has a, a, a very enormous point for us. And uh, we're beginning in, in the book of Mark, in the book of Mark, uh, the first two verses in Mark that we're beginning in, uh, as Jesus' ministry uh, began, it begins with a purpose, and he's supposed to be our example of what to do, and he, so he starts his ministry out finding and seeking after people, and he doesn't seek after them uh, questionably, he seeks after them with, 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 with aggression, with just, you know, follow me. And so he understands the facts that are, will be logged in John 6, 44, which says that no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them. And so Jesus says this uh, in, in the book of John, and he says he'll raise them up on the last day. And so for, for, for us to understand that, he, he doesn't sit back and, and try to figure out everything. He does, doesn't sit back and try to get it all figured out. He already knows what he has to do. He wants to do the will of him who has sent him. And so he um, doesn't try to figure it out. He's not seeking anything else but the father's purpose, who the father has sent him. And so it's so awesome because he, 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 he runs into Simon and Andrew, uh, who are by trade, they are fishermen. They are fishermen. And so he approaches them and says something profound that I think for us as believers, it will help us. It helps his followers uh, from then and it helps his followers now. How many of you are ready this morning? If you're ready, say, I am ready. Remember uh, when we are reading in Jesus's uh, uh, scriptures, his parables, his simple messages to the believers, it's okay um, to understand the parable or the message, but it's not okay to not understand the parable or the message correctly. You must know how, not just how to understand it, but you must know how to it apply, how to apply it to your personal life. It's important that you understand that. You must know how to apply it, and then you must apply it to your lives. And so this is important because as we read this, whenever you read it on your own, whether you're at home or wherever you're at, I want you to read it with a purpose. Read it not just to understand it, but read it to do what? Apply it to your lives. That's where the enemy gets us. He gets us to read the scripture and think because we know it, we're okay. But there's no application. There has to be application. And if there's no application reading it, you just become educated. So this is, this is important for us. And uh, so Jesus, uh, this is what he says in verse 16. Uh, this is Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 16 through 18. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Simple scripture. Simple scripture. So the question we have to ask ourselves is what did Jesus mean when he told them he would make them fishers of people? Because those were his disciples. And anyone who follows the teachings of Christ are what? Disciples. So what does that make us? Disciples. 
So as disciples, we have to know what he was implying when he said that to Simon and Andrew. In order to gain understanding of what Christ meant, what Jesus meant uh, when he said to fish for people, you have to first know what it is to fish for fish. Anybody ever been fishing before? Fish for Amen, amen. Got the hands going up in the audience here. And so um, you have to first know what it is to fish for fish and how Simon and Andrew are relating to fishing. Were they just casual fishermen or were they actual uh, fishermen by trade? And having that complete understanding will give us a clue on what Jesus meant for us to establish how to fish for people. Is everybody ready to fish for people today? Amen. Amen. So Simon and Andrew were not just a casual average fisherman uh, who went down to the lake every day to throw their rod and see if they can catch something and not 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 knowing what they're going to catch, but just fishing. They weren't those average fishermen. They were professional fishermen. So write that down. Simon and Andrew were professional fishermen. They fished for a living. So they had to be well knowledgeable about their trade. It's not just throwing your rod in the water. It's throwing your rod in the water with a purpose, knowing exactly what you need to accomplish. So Jesus is referring to professional fishing. Now, there are people who would uh, just go out and, you know, I, I remember I used to go out and just throw, you know, throw my rod and Theo, brother Theo know what I'm talking about. We just go and, uh, you know, we think we professionals. We go and uh, we, we, we use different types of bait, but, you know, based on where we're at and stuff like that. But it's still for us, it's just casual fishing. Um, here's a clue. If you get your rod from Walmart, Academy, <laughs> <laughs> you're probably most likely a casual fisher who thinks you're a professional sometimes. Amen. So um, we're a professional uh, by belief, but not by trade. And so how many people have watched that show, you know, show on TV, whether you are you know, avid fishermen or not, have you ever watched any of those fishing shows like the wicked tuna? Have anybody ever seen that one? You mean, you don't even need to like fish, but when you watch that show, it's amazing. Cause you see what they do. And, um, you know, think about this, you know, the, the fish, uh, the biggest fish I might have caught, caught, you know, you know, weighed a few pounds or whatever. Uh, wicked tuna, those tuna they, they catch, they weigh over 400 pounds. The heavy, well, weigh between 400 and 500 pounds. Now, I did some research. I read that the largest tuna recorded was recorded in the Atlantic blue, uh, it was Atlantic bluefin and it was recorded, its length was 12 feet long. It weighed 1,497 pounds. You can guess, I probably didn't catch it. Maybe me or Theo or Cindy or any of us who fished, we probably not, didn't even come close to that. Over our lifetime, we might not have come close to catching that many fish to equal out to 1,500 pounds. And uh, would you agree that that type of fish, that size of fish wouldn't be caught probably with the Walmart reel? Anybody agree with that? Everybody agree with that? Wouldn't be caught probably at Calaveras Lake or Bronin Lake. Wouldn't be caught at one of those places, right? No, no. But we go there as professional fishers. <laughs> we go there and we have our fishing poles wherever we got them from and we throw them in the water, but we're not out to catch those wicked tunas. Those tunas would just snap our poles like it's nothing. And so the poles that they have are not bought at Walmart. So the, that's, the, the, this is professional fishing we're talking about. And so we must know the difference in order to apply what Jesus is talking about to our lives. Here are some characteristics. This is what we want to do this morning, give you some characteristics of what professional fishermen are, okay? Can we agree that nobody in here is probably a professional fisherman? Amen, amen, even the, Theo, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man, I deflate, Sydney, I'm sorry. Shaking your head back down, I deflated all you. I'm sorry, but I'm in the game too. And, and we've never done wicked tuna. We've watched it, we may have watched several seasons, amen? 
Amen. Amen. But we uh, are not professional fishermen. So let me tell you what a professional fisherman is. A uh, professional fisherman, one, they must have professional equipment. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> they must have professional. It's so simple. They must have professional uh, equipment. Uh, they're not going to have a pole or, or, or a net uh, that you can probably buy at the local store. They're going to have something that's effective for their trade. And so they're, they're going to have what? They're going to have a boat. They're not going to be fishing off the pier. Anybody ever fish off the pier? Are you excited when you catch certain? Guess what I caught off the pier? I caught a baby shark. Yeah, they catch real sharks. Big sharks. They catch the mama and the papas out there. And so we're excited because we caught a two-foot shark. It's nothing compared to those avid, those fishermen who really go out to do, if they're going out, they're going out for shark. We just lucked up and caught a shark. I remember one time I lucked up and I know I claim professionalism, <laughs> but I lucked up and caught a fish. And some of you will know this if you're a professional fisherman. I caught the fish and uh, I'm normally okay with bringing it on the boat, but the fish, there was a problem with the fish. And it was my first time experiencing that. That fish had eyes on the bottom of their, their, their torso. And some of y'all know what type of fish, yeah, I know. It's a what, gar? Flounder, flounder, gar, flounder, flounder. That's what, it, flounder. I learned that word for the first day when I was trying to run off the boat. That fish had eyes when they, I was like, what's wrong with that fish? I turned him over, his eyes were on the bottom. And we had the professional guy with us. And um, he, he proceeded to tell me the word flounder. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a flounder. Well, can we throw it back in? He's like, no, that's good meat. Do you want that? I was like, no, I don't. Its eyes are in the wrong place. <laughs> and so from what I, when I heard about flounders, those eyes generally, they will migrate. They will shift around the body. I don't know all the details on it. All I know is I did not want the fish. All right, so that's a true story. I caught the flounder for the first time and was excited about that. And so, um, a professional fisherman is different. They have to have the proper net. They have to have the proper fishing pole for their trade. They're, they've got to have a boat. They're not going to have a boat that you borrow from a friend. They're not going to have a boat that you went out on with a friend. They're going to have a professional boat that's geared for what they're doing. They're going to have professional clothing. They're not just going to throw on something that makes them warm. They're going to throw on their fishing gear. They're going to have the proper bait. And they're going to have all the things they need to be successful as professional fishermen. And so uh, for us as, as children of God, so, you know, the question we have to continually ask ourselves is what did Jesus mean? What was he talking about? What's he referring to? What's he talking about when he's talking about, you know, he wants them to be a fisher of men. And so here we go uh, with this. Uh, the first thing, like I said, they have to have professional equipment. The second thing, they have to, uh, uh, you know, base their bait uh, on the type of fish they're trying to catch. I want you to write that down. Second thing is they're trying to base their, they have to base their bait on the fish they're trying to catch. Now, what does that mean? Well, when we go, uh, we get bait that is affordable. I used to go fishing with my dad and we uh, would probably look at the co cost of bait, but then my father would say things like, boy, we can dig that up ourselves. Y'all know that conversation. And so what we would do, we would go out and he would find a place and we would dig up and get the same type of worms we were going to buy. And so um, I would, would you have to, would you agree with me that those are not professional, uh, you know, professional type fishing moves. And so, um, Professional fishermen, they base their bait on the type of fish they're trying to catch. This is important for us as Christians. I guess if they're trying to catch a small shark, they're probably not going to use what? Grub worms. They're probably not going to use earthworms. Why? Because sharks are not interested in that type of food. And so the third thing is professional fishermen are familiar with the type of water they are fishing in. I just go because they say, let's go to this place. I'm not familiar with all the ins and outs of the place. I just go, I'm trying to find somebody who is, and I'll go with them. 
These people are not going to, professional fishermen are not going to go to Woodlawn Park and try to catch a redfish. They're not going to go to the Calaveras Lake and try to catch a, a, a big, enormous shark. They're not going to um, go to these places. And so you have to ask yourself, what type of water do they look for? And what are the type of fish are they looking for? Professional fishermen, number four, know the general depth of the water and where the fish will typically be. If you have no perception, family. If you have no perception of the depth of water, you can have the right pole, you can have the right bait, but be in the wrong place, which equals no success. The fish may be at another place, but you're in this other place just because it's a good place to be. And so here, here's a quick side story. Me, uh, when I was young, you know, my father would take me on Saturdays, you know, every so often we'd go fishing and we'd go to this place called Salado Park. And uh, that was uh, off, you know, on the base and, and we would go and we'd go fishing. And I remember when I learned how to fish for the very first time, uh, he was teaching me the ins and outs. My dad was the real cool person. He was the type of person you didn't know if he was mad at you. Uh, and he smoked because back in those days, a lot of people smoked. And so he had a cigarette and he just, he just, and sometimes he just give you that look and that's enough. And I, my mom always tells a story about when we were at one of the stores and I messed around and I knocked a rack of clothes over. See, back then they could beat you and it'd be legal in the store. And so uh, I just remember, I recall um, back then, you know, we got into the car and I just remember uh, um, climbing up in the front seat. We could do that back then, right? Seatbelts were the things you played with. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's like those things, like, what is this? Click, 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 you know? So I get up and I get into the front seat. And um, I, I don't remember the exact word, but I just remember saying, you know, uh, Dad, you, you love me, right? He says, yes, son, I love you. And mom tells me that they knew exactly what I was up to. And I said, well, you don't want to spank me, do you? And he couldn't refrain from, he's trying to refrain from laughing, but I was serious. That was my politicking not to get the butt whooping because he's not going to forget about it. It's one of those things where you could have beat me there, but you're going to make me suffer. You know, because the, the, the ride, you cry on the ride home. How many of you got your own switch before? You cry bringing it back in. You, what? <laughs> so I'm just telling you this story because um, when we went fishing, um, at Salado Park, I was excited. I wanted to catch my first fish. And when we got out there, he showed me how to bait and put the worm on. I thought that was just the grossest thing in the world. And I was like, that poor worm got a pole going through his whole body. But that's a whole thing. And then we throw it in the water. And he let me just go into my own thing with, with throwing it in the water. And he told me not to throw it by the lily pads. Didn't listen because I saw a fish down by the lake. You know, have you ever been in those places where you see the fish and they're just not interested in your bait? Well, anyways, I had those, a big old fish who was down in the water and I threw the uh, pole in and I'm trying, I threw the thing in. I was trying to catch him. I was hoping he would just, he's just looking at me. I thought he was dead. He just kept looking at me. And I threw it around him. I was jiggling in front of him. It was like, He just wouldn't do anything. So I threw it and then it went in the deep, it went in under that lily pad. And I started to get a bite. So I'm excited. I started to get a bite and it kept tugging at my thing. I was like, oh man, I got a fish. I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not telling my dad about all this. I'm just like, I see my bobber. You know the bobbers, right? Yeah, the bobbers. You know, boop, they start going down. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna show my dad I can do this. So the fish finally, um, pulls and it pulls my worm off for some reason and um i pull it back in i said dad it took my worm and he's like I told you not to fish by the lily pad and i said put another worm i put it on myself this time threw it back out in the water because he's not gonna tell me <laughs> i'm gonna catch a fish i don't care if it's this big i'm gonna catch a fish and i and it was pulling at my thing again and pulling my thing again and then finally i hooked it and I said, Dad, I got it. He was like, boy, you got a turtle. I said, I ain't got no turtle. I got a fish. 
And he's like, okay, pull it on in. I pulled it in. Sure enough, it was heavy and the cutest little thing, but it swallowed my whole hook. That's the thing about turtles. Well, we had these little small hooks. He didn't have the gigantic, you know, but we had a small hook and he swallowed my whole hook because I gave him time because he ate two of my worms. And so he swallowed the hook. Um, we took him out and I didn't want to look at my dad. He had a cigarette in his mouth. I remember the exact look. <laughs> and so I pulled this big old this turtle out and I'm like, it's just the cutest little thing. We don't want it to die. What do we do with it? He's like, well, son, you got to cut the line. Oh, that means he's going to be stuck with the hook. No, no, you got to cut the line. Well, why? Because he will not let go of the line. I'm like, okay. So we had to cut the line. And what are we going to do with the fit? The fit? We just threw him back in. And so uh, I tell you this because I did not listen. And he knew what was going to happen to me. Because he knew more and I knew less, I thought I could do better. And I tell you this for a reason, because there's a reason Jesus is saying professional. He's talking to these professional fishermen. And so uh, I just remember uh, my dad, you know, he was the one, he cut the line for me and he, he showed me how to restring my own line. He wasn't gonna do it for me because it was my fault <laughs> that I lost the hook. And so um, I had to redo it myself. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I guess I'll stay away from the lily pads now. <laughs> guess what? I caught a fish. He was this big, but he was mine. And I was like, yeah, we're going to take this home, right? He was like, sure. <laughs> but he didn't laugh like that. I felt that, though. And we took that little fish home. I don't even know if we ate it. It was probably a nugget. But um, we took it. It was mine. Uh, so, you know, I, 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 I was excited that I hooked my shark, which was a turtle. And um, what I want you to know is that casual fishing is not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about professional. And they have to, uh, they have to have the right equipment. They have to use the proper bait to attract the proper fish. To know, they have to know the location they are at. They have to know the depth, the proper depth why is that important for us as Christians in here? Why is that important? What are we trying to do here? Why is it important? Because of what Jesus said in verse 17. Let me read that again. He said, come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish professionally for people. I threw that word professionally in there because he was talking to professionals. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you have to learn to be a fisher of people. And what does that require? It requires, just like the professional fishermen, it requires the proper equipment. It re requires the proper bait, the proper location, and the proper depth. You have to know what you're doing. Now, uh, the equipment, what, who, how do you relate the equipment to what we're doing? The equipment we need to fish for people is what you have in your hands, the Bible. If you do not have a Bible, you're wasting your time. If you have not opened it, if it's dusty, if you're not using your equipment, you're wasting your time. Why are you here? The equipment would be the word of God. So how are we going to spread the word of God to somebody else if we're not equipped properly? How are we going to spread the word? How are we going to share scripture, but we don't know the true meaning of scripture? That's why it's important for us. No matter how many people in here, it's important for us to understand the scripture we are reading. To share Scripture falsely is just as bad as the false teachers. It's hard to find a scripture if we never open our Bible. How can you help somebody if you never open your Bible? How are we going to invite people to a church that we never attend? Mm. 
How are we going to invite them to a church that we're not regularly at? We have to be equipped with the proper tools and be ready for the fish, the people. Imagine, I, I seen one time where somebody invited somebody to church and, prob- and this, the, that person was problematic on coming, suspect, they were here and there, and then the person they invited showed up to church looking for them. But they weren't there because the person didn't show up the first week, but the person showed up the next week and the original inviter didn't show up. That's not effective fishing. That's not effective fishing for people. So to be effective, we have to practice what we preach. You can't give somebody a scripture that you don't follow yourselves. You have to have the proper equipment. Now, a Bible that you are familiar with is not because of the color. A Bible you are familiar with is not because of the text or or the texture or the size. A Bible you are familiar with is a Bible that you use all the time in group Bible studies. You use them in just in daily devotions. You use them in your personal study time. You use it all the time because you're familiar with it. Look at your neighbors and say, you are professional. Amen. Now look at them again and say, now get the right equipment. (laughs) the bait. Let's talk about the bait now. The bait is the gospel. Amen. Can we say amen this morning? The gospel is why we are here. The gospel is why we're excited. The gospel is why we cry in the middle of challenges. This morning, I was going uh, to to pick up my mother. and um, I was behind this truck that was going extremely slow. And I'm sitting here wondering, why is this truck going so slow? And I get on the bridge to go over to her place, her location. And uh, I'm cruising, got my praise music on, praying and just talking to the Lord. And I'm behind this truck and this truck stops right where we curve off. So I'm going to go over the bridge and be at her house in five minutes. Excited about that. That truck stopped and some lights come on. And they say, no, go that way. I'm like, go what way? I'm going this way. He said, no, go that Well, that vehicle in front of you went that way. Why can't I go that way? Because he was the authority that could stop traffic. And so I was the last person. I was the first person in front of him. But the person rejected, the first person rejected from going the right way. So immediately I called my brother Edmund. I said, brother Edmund, it's it's not going to work. I called my wife. I said, I'm like, I'm going to be late. I'm going to, I got to go to back roads. And even the other roads were closed. The whole highway was blocked off. And I'm like, well, this is great. But then the Lord told me while I was curving around, he said, go this way. This way was set for you. This is the narrow path. Stop worrying about the wide path. Worry about the narrow path. Trust this way because I sent you that way. And so the bait is the gospel. The bait is the gospel about Jesus Christ. And if you don't know the gospel, why are you here? The gospel is the good news about Jesus that believers should operate in. It is the the good news. You should be able to to, to say it with your eyes closed. You shouldn't have to read it. You should know it, that God's son came down to this earth to die for our wrongs. He, he, He died for our wrongs against the father. All the things we've done wrong, we've lied, we've cheated, we've told bad stories, we've done, we've rejected him, we've done all things, but he died for that. And whoever believes in him as a worthy substitute will have the opportunity to turn towards him and be forgiven and accepted forever. Can you give God a round of applause in the house of the Lord? And and so I'm the type of person who's a good student. I'm like, that's a win-win situation for me. Count me in on that. All I have to do is is, is turn away from the wicked things and try to pull myself away from the things that are not of God and share with people for the rest of my life this good news. Man, sign me up. I'm in. And so what is the proper location? If the bait is the gospel, the proper location would be the church. How are you going to catch a person 
but not have the proper place to take them to? How are you going to tell somebody the gospel but can't share a church with them? What church do you go to? I've seen many people say, well, I, I, I go to that, um, that church off 1604. Uh, yeah, you know that one off 1604. Yeah, right out there. What's it called? Oh, I don't know. I ain't been there in a while. Two story about three months ago. I had that conversation with somebody. I'm like, really? You don't even know what church you go to? That's because you don't go there. And so for, for us, proper location is this. This is this is the church. This is, you know, this is how you catch people. This is how you give them the proper information. And you've got the easiest job and, 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 and you don't want to play with this. This is the eternal stuff. We're doing eternal work today. So you should give God a round of applause in the house. You're, you're doing eternal work today. You showed up. Some of you struggled. Some of you went through some things. I, I, I like this because it's amazing that we've been, you know, we go through and we can feel the resistance of the enemy. We felt it this morning in the music. We felt it this morning in me trying to get here. We felt it this morning in all your lives. We felt it this morning with your temptation not to get up. We felt it. How many of you felt it? I felt it in the resistance last night. I'm up at three, four in the morning going back and forth and doing different things. And I'm like, wow, this is enormous. Why? God got something good for you. We don't want to play with this. We want to get this right. So you have to have one, a Bible that you frequent. You have to know the gospel, the good news, because that's why we're here. We're not celebrating anything else. We're not celebrating you being in a church for a year. We're celebrating the, the glory of God. We're celebrating that Jesus came down on this earth and lived with his creator. You have to know how to share the gospel. You have to know how to invite them to the proper location. Let's do the ministry. You have to invite them to church. Now, believers have the easy job. You should just be ushers. Not church ushers, but ushers to the church. In baseball, if we use that analogy, all you have to do is get people to the plate. You get them to the plate and the word of God will help them hit the right home run. And so you get them to the plate and guess what I do? I pitch to them. God will help them smack the ball. It's called glory. And that ball is not just going to be the first base, not going to be the second base, not going to be a third base. It's going to be a home run because in Christ, things multiply. If we were talking about seeds, you sow the seed. That's all you do. You just tell people about the Jesus and how great he is. You sow the seed and you tell them about how great your church is. You sow the seed and tell them about how enormous this congregation is, even though it's only a few. You tell them about the power of the Holy Spirit working in your church. You sow the seed of invitation. Guess what I do? I just water it with the word of God. And God will grow them if they are the right people. And we're talking about fishing today. What do you got to do? You just got to throw the rod in the water. And if you throw the water, the rod in the water, guess what? I bait them with the word of God. And if I bait them with the word of God, guess what Jesus does? He allows you to catch them. He catches them with his spirit. He catches them with his Holy Spirit. And God does the rest of the work. If you are his sheep who hear his voice. If the people are the sheep who hear his voice. That's all we do. Jesus establishes himself and gives his disciples a great commission. This is what we're supposed to be responsible for, his disciples, that's us. He gives them a simple, uh, great commission in a simple coin. 
and all who follow the teachings of Jesus, please pay attention to this. If you follow, if you trust in Christ as your Lord and your Savior, follow what he's saying here. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. This is what he said. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very ends of the age. What does that mean for us? What does that mean for us? He told us to go fishing and he told us to go make disciples. It means that blessed kingdom ministries has, has gone fishing. That is all we're supposed to be doing. We are seeking the will of God. Everywhere we walk, we got our rods in our hands. I went to an event last night, had my rod in my hand. When I go to the store, when I leave here, I'm going to have my rod in my hand. Why? Because we are doing the will of him who sent us. In layman's term, that's every day. People should wonder, shouldn't wonder who you are because to the unrighteous, your fruits reek of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. They're not going to understand you because they're not of you. They're not going to know why you cry, but yet get up and go to church because they're not with you. They're not going to understand why you have whine and, and have problems, but down on your knees praising God. They're not going to understand why you may have challenges and, and tribulations, but you still lift your hands and praise. They're not going to understand that. Why? Because what's in them is different from what's in you. And so they shouldn't ask whether you are fishing. They should ask, where are you fishing at? When they see you, you should reek of Jesus. Reek meaning in the world, you reek. But in Christ, you, you contain the righteousness of God. That's our purpose. That's what we're here for. We're not here to waste our time. We're here to praise God. And so we're supposed to smell of Christ in everything we do. When they see us at work, your demeanor should tell who you serve. Your praise should tell who you serve. Your lack of fear should tell who you serve. When you talk to people next door to you, they should see that there's something different in you. They should see you getting up every Sunday and going to service. They should see that you blessing them and praying for them and saying, hey, God bless you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for your sick mother. I'll have, can I help you with your car? Do you need anything? Can I bring y'all some food? What does it take for me to help you? Why? Because what's in you is great. Our purpose is to serve God. That's what we've been created to do. We have to remain in fish mode. If you write anything down, write to you must remain in fish mode. What does that mean? You have to always be checking your equipment to make sure you have the right equipment. You have to be always checking your bait, the gospel, to make sure you are prepared to tell others about what Jesus has done for you. You have to be prepared and always having those things on day in and day, uh, day out. You have to have the proper equipment. You have to have the proper bait. You have to know the water that you're dealing in. You have to know the people that you're talking to. You have to know the depth of the sin and the challenges that they have in their lives. Why? Because what's in you is greater. You're expected to do that. That's just what we qualify to do, to tell others about Jesus. You got to sharpen yourself every day with the word of God. If you don't know how to tell somebody how to find Jesus, just telling them it's going to be all right is not enough. God is with you. No, he's not. He's with you if you accept him. 
Well, I'll pray for you. No, I'll help you to know what true prayer is. I'll help you to know what the gospel is. I'll help you to know that your life is not going in the right direction. I'll help you to know that you need to turn. I'll help you to know that you're on the wide gate. I'll help you to know that you're the rich young ruler avoiding Jesus. This is what these parables are for, so that you can take them, apply them, and use them. And as fishermen, we have to fish properly. We have to have the proper bait, the proper equipment, the proper location, and the proper depth. How many of you are ready to fish this week? Amen. If you're ready to fish, let's give God honor and glory in the house. Amen. Can we bless the Lord? Can we bless the Lord? Amen. Let me pray for you real quick. Lord, bless these children. Bless these children to hear the words that you are preaching this morning. To hear them and not take them in vain, but to take them to heart and apply them to their lives. Help them, Lord, not to experience being without your word, to appreciate your word. Help them to know that your word is in them and it is with them and it'll never leave them. Help them to abide in you, Father, so that you may be abide in them. Help them to trust in you with all their hearts, minds, and souls. Help them to trust in you through their ailments and trials and tribulations. Help them to trust that you have directed their pathways and that they will be successful. Help them to let go of anger, let go of bitterness, let go of wrath, let go of uh, the desi selfish desires. Help them to seek your will. Father. We pray for a mighty movement of your Holy Spirit in our hearts, Lord reminding us, Lord, that you are with us and you'll never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. Allow us to be your true children, Lord, seeking your gospel, knowing your gospel, understanding your gospel, and sharing your gospel. We pray for your wisdom and guidance. We pray for your understanding and your peace. Bless us, Lord, in the small things, the small things in this world, but the enormous things to you. Allow us to understand, Lord, even though the small fish was caught, Lord. I didn't know it was for your glory because if it had been a big fish, I wouldn't have preached about it. But because of a small fish and a small turtle, <laughs> you bless us. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom and the word. In Jesus' mighty name, bless him, Father. Amen.